Good morning and welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist here at St. Mary's Church in Aylesbury. I welcome here, you here this morning as we come to acknowledge our dependence upon God Almighty. In the midst of so much that's going on in the world, it is right and proper that we should pause, sit back, relax, again perhaps with a cup of coffee or tea, and come before the presence of Almighty God, the immortal invisible who is always with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive us in new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. A reading from Zephaniah chapter 1. 
Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion the whole earth shall be consumed, for a full, a terrible end. He will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, 1 to 11. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come, like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or the darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do But let us keep awake and be sober, for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has designed us not for wrath, but abstain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the proclamation of the Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, It is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. 
Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you? that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter, then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I now welcome our preacher this morning, Reina Mazzarera. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be quiet, for the day of the Lord is near. Be quiet, for the day of the Lord is at hand. On this second Sunday before Advent, these are the words from Zephaniah telling the people of God to be quiet, for the day of the Lord is near. Of course, in two weeks' time, it will be Advent, time to prepare for Christmas, time to prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the Christian year draws to an end, today we come across a passage in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, pointing to the end time. The parable of talents is about Jesus' second coming. It is about Jesus' return. Like the parable just before it, in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13, the parable about the ten virgins, judgment is at the center of this parable. And the unexpected nature of the master's return is quite significant. In this parable, Jesus talks about his hopes and what he expects his followers to be doing while he is away and await his return. We are told that the master summons three slaves and entrusts them with his property to do business while he goes on a journey. The first two slaves, they do business with the talents given to them and they actually double the master's money. They use all their potential they wake faithful as expected of them. And on return, the master is so happy with them. 
he praises them good and faithful servants they are rewarded they are given more responsibilities and he asks them to enter his joy the third slave he did not do anything he did not use his talents instead he dug a hole buried the talent in there of course when the master returns, the third slave, he comes up with what was given to him. Here you are. Everything accounted for. The master is not happy and he is not rewarded. Because the master expected the servants to continue with his business, to take risks and make profit, to emulate the behavior of their master. Yes, the two slaves, they acted faithfully and they actually increased the wealth of their master. They expanded the estate while the third slave came and started to give excuses and explanations. When I looked at first glance in this gospel, I could not identify the good news. I read again and I read again. Then I got a hint. Of course, considering the actions, the behavior of the two Slaves, why were they so bold in whatever they did? Why were they so adventurous? Why were they so fearless? Faith. The two slaves had faith. They had trust in their master, that which the third slave did not do. This parable of talents is about what it means to be Jesus' followers. This is about what it means to be Christians. This is about what it means to be faithful to Jesus even when he is away, even when we do not see him. This is about you and me. This parable, it applies to our daily life situations. Fear overtakes our desires, our abilities to do good. Fear stops us from challenging bad behavior. Fear stops us from challenging injustice. Fear, because of fear, we are so hesitant to volunteer to do some things not so sure whether we are able to do them not so sure whether we have the capabilities fear makes us hesitant to volunteer to do things we can't be inconvenienced today the parable of talents it is reminding us of the walls we dig for ourselves all around us the parable also reminds us to stand bold, to stand fearless like the two slaves and stand with Jesus Christ. This parable, it asks us to endure difficulties and live in anticipation of Jesus' second coming. Yes, the return of the master is certain, but the timing is not known. This is what Paul refers to in our second reading for today, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. When Paul refers to times and deaths, he is talking about the end times. He is talking about the day of the Lord. It is coming, but we don't know when. When we read Second Peter chapter 3, Peter 
refers to the day of the Lord. Peter describes the day of the Lord as coming like a thief, meaning it is sudden and unexpected. There is an element of surprise in it. The end time that Zephaniah talks about, the day of the Lord, this is when God's rule will be extended over nations. Yes, here Zephaniah is referring to the Babylonian exile when those in exile will return to Jerusalem. The day of the Lord that Zephaniah talks about is quite frightening news to the enemies in Christ. However, this is good news to the Christians. The day of the Lord, it brings hope to the Christians. The day of the Lord, this is when everything else will be made new by God. What does this gospel mean for you? What lesson do you take? Yes, readiness in faith does not mean passive, watchful rest for us as Christians. Faith demands action. Faithful stewardship of money, of time, of talents is part of getting ready, of being prepared for Jesus' second coming. Yes, in this parable, the man who goes on a journey represents our Lord Jesus Christ. It represents Jesus' ascension. As Christians, we are the slaves with all the blessings, with all the gifts bestowed in us. Yes, we all have gifts. This parable, it reminds us today that we are entrusted with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we will be accountable for it on his second coming. We all have blessings. We all have gifts. What we choose to do with these gifts is at the heart of the gospel for today. What gifts were given to you, dear friends? This is for you to answer. In this parable, we are the slaves. But which slave do you identify with? Amen. Will you please stand as we proclaim our faith, declaring our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we offer our prayers for ourselves, for those we love, and for the world unto Almighty God. Loving God, we offer you our prayers now for all people and their situations, for lives that are going through upheaval or distress, for circumstances which only you can change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world, remembering those Christians in countries where their beliefs make them vulnerable and in danger. Uphold and strengthen all who are persecuted for their faith. We pray for hostages and their families and loved ones from whom they're separated. We give thanks for this church and our work here in Aylesbury. May our restoration works that are about to start point the way to God's kingdom in our community and welcome all who are seeking through our doors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Creator God, we pray for peace in the world, for understanding between nations, religions and factions, and for an end to old scores which remain unsettled. We pray for the peoples of the Middle East and for Christian, Muslim and Jew, that they may live alongside one another in mutual respect and harmony. We pray too for fair shares and fair trade and that all the talents of the workers of the world are fairly rewarded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the United States of America and we ask you that you would give the new president-elect wisdom beyond his own understanding and the courage to choose the right path no matter how narrow the gate especially at this difficult time of the ongoing pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for the gifts, talents and abilities you've given each of us, praying that a deeper understanding of those talents can be used and shared within our church and the community. Set us free from the fear that makes us inward looking. Give us a renewed generosity with our time our talents and our treasure. Give us a renewed concern for those who are struggling in our congregations and our communities. Give us a renewed vision of what it is to be your church in this place at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgiving God, send your healing forgiveness to all who are suffering feelings of guilt, shame or regret. Help to mend broken relationships. Be with all who feel that through advancing years or failing health, they cannot enjoy life as it used to be. May those who are learning to live a new pattern of life feel that you're walking beside them. We especially pray for the sick and suffering in our congregation and give you thanks for those who are on the road to recovery. We especially pray for the coronavirus situation and the procedures that have been put into force to try to halt its spread. Help us all to be responsible in the things that we do in our lives to prevent the spread of the virus by taking heed of the recommended precautions and avoiding situations which may make things worse. And our prayers are asked for Mary, Liz, Dan, Mark, Julian, Peter, Doris, Jerry and Sonra. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we remember those who've died and for those who are bereaved. May the light of Christ, which eternally shines, bring hope to their dark places. We especially pray for any of those whose anniversary falls at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, forgive us when we only turn to you when things trouble us and when we forget to thank you for your blessings and bounty. Help us to recognise all the wonderful things in your world for which, for which we should be thankful. And send us out into the coming week, ready to show our gratitude in all that we do and say. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having confessed our sins and been assured of God's continuing love and cleansing absolution of us, we are able to stand in peace with God and with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. For those of you who have subscribed and signed in with your own YouTube account, uh, you might be participating in the chat, which is located off on the right-hand side of the screen. I invite you to share words of peace with one another, to know the community that we share still, even though we are currently separated with the hope that we shall all soon be gathered together again to worship God in his glory. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanksgiving and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks he broke it, gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great high priest, 
this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. In confidence, let us pray to the Father for the coming of the kingdom amongst us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. For all who are baptized, who come to this celebration with hearts open to Jesus, who are unable to be here in the presence of this bread, this wine. I invite you now to make your act of spiritual communion. Will you pray with me? My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. the body of Christ, broken for you. The 
the blood of Christ shed for you. If you have this day, this morning, received this gift of spiritual communion with Christ, I would invite you to, either in the chat off to the right, to type SC, spiritual communion, times yourself and however many people are with you, or to call the office number as it's printed below, uh, Aylesbury 437-641 just to state that you and however, with, however many are with you have participated in this celebration of the Eucharist. Thank you. Gracious Lord, 
In this holy sacrament, you give substance to our hope. Bring us at the last to that fullness of life for which we long, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As we come to our notices, I want to share some delightful news. Um, we have been very much blessed, uh, even in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, uh, through the offering of a government grant for the uh, Cultural Recovery Fund for Major Works through English Heritage, um, and we've been blessed with £281,816 uh, towards some essential repair work to our church building. Um, that, along with some other major grants from the Bucks Historic Churches Trust, uh, from the Anson Charitable Trust, uh, from a couple of others that are still on their way in, um, we are a very long way towards uh, being able to pay for some repairs that will be starting uh, in initial, very initial works this week, and then scaffolding going up next week. So the work that we've been thinking about, longing for, trying to find a way to pay for on this amazing building uh, is about to begin. Thanks be to God and thank you for all of you and your ongoing support. Um, we are very, very much blessed. Um, even in the midst of these ongoing pandemic restrictions and ca cautionary actions, um, I can assure you that we are continuing to say individually morning prayer in the church uh, during the week. Uh, if you would like to individually join in that saying of morning prayer, uh, that happens at 9.30 in the morning. Um, certainly we don't want everybody gathering there, but for a few people who do, that should still be okay because we keep at least three or four meters between people. God is seriously at work in this world in the midst of so much confusion and chaos. Continue to be alert for what God is doing in your life, in the life of your neighbors and loved ones. Be watchful and be vocal in saying, this is our God at work. It is a good spiritual practice and I commend that to you. Let us pray. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn number 449. Soldiers of Christ, arise! <laughs>